Section 21.5. In this section, we will continue connecting the potential with the electric field. We began doing that before. The, um, but we begin by the, uh, defining the equipotential surfaces. We talked about these uh, surfaces before in the case of parallel plates. But let us look at uh, the case of a point charge. It's a big point, point charge. And um, let us look at the potential that it produces at point A. Well, the potential is given by this is KQ divided by R. So um, it's going to have some value here. It's going to have a smaller value here because R is larger. But if we were to move this point, say, down here, at the same distance here than here, then the potential at this point would be the same as point A. So in fact, all these points would be at the same uh, potential. We can represent that with the, these uh, dashed lines. Let us say that the potential here is 2 volts. All these points there are uh, 2 volts. Uh, likewise, uh, all these points that are at the same distance from the charge would be at 1 volt, say. And we can go on and continue circling the charge, going around the charge, and realize that all these points have the same, since they are the same distance from the charge, they all have the same potential. B equals 2, and the same here, B equals 1. But as a matter of fact, it is not only on the plane. In fact, we can come out of the plane, and still the potential would be the same. So we can represent that with those these uh, uh, the spheres, transparent spheres, in which all the points on the surface of this sphere will be at two voltage, uh, two volts, and all the points on the surface of this other sphere are going to be at one volt. So we can go on like that and represent it. For instance, we can we're representing here different equipotential lines corresponding to high potential and smaller potential. The innermost circle is at 600 volts and the outermost circle is at 100 volts. And we can see that uh, it is not linear. It is does not decrease linearly. It goes down very fast and then is lower. Uh, something uh, of interest is that um, all the points on a single equipotential line or equipotential surface are at the same value of the electric potential. Now, these lines of electric potential never cross, of course, because if this is for 500, if this is for 200 volts and this is for 100 volts, if they were to cross, we wouldn't know if it was 200 or 100, the, the point where they cross. So, um, consequently, uh, the equipotential lines never cross. Now, if you have a charge, the charge will move, if you if you place a charge, say here, a positive charge, it will be repelled by this charge and it will move radially out following the electric field, but never along an equipotential line or an equipotential surface, always perpendicular to that. These surfaces are always perpendicular to the electric fields. This is point number four. And if we happen to move a charge from, say, from this point to another point on the same equipotential surface, then we wouldn't be doing any work because the, the electric field is radially out and the force that it produces is radially out and we're moving at 90 degrees with respect to that force. And so it wouldn't be doing uh, any, any work. So we have a uh, conclusion that the electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces, like for instance in this case, imagine that you have the charge there, and um, at this point the field is will be perpendicular to the equipotential surface, but it can be perpendicular pointing this way or per perpendicular pointing this way. Well, how do you think that the charge would move by itself if you leave it, uh, if you allow it to move by itself? Well, it's going to go from whatever value of the potential to a lower value of the potential. So it would be moving down, which means that the field is going to be moving, 
is going to be pointing down. The field always goes from high to low potential and it has to be uh, at 90 degrees with respect to the perpendicular. So this is what, what we have here. An equipotential surface is perpendicular to the electric field lines at all points. The electric field points in the direction of decreasing potential, always. So if you want to know um, how are the equipotential lines of a field, well, you have to draw the fields, the field lines, like in this case, like this, but then you have to draw the equipotential lines perpendicular to these field lines, like this. So this would be one equipotential line. Actually, it's a surface, it's a plane. If this is a parallel plate, uh, a plate, then this would be a plane um, parallel to this uh, plate. Now imagine that um, you have two points and say point A somewhere here and point B somewhere there. And uh, how does it change when you go from A to B? How does the voltage change as you go from A to B? Well, we have to go back to the definitions that we have. And this, imagine that you place a charge at point A and you let it move from A to B. Who's doing the work? Well, being this a positive charge, it will move by itself. So the potential will be, the potential energy will be decreasing and consequently the potential will be decreasing. And the work done is gonna be, as we saw before, force times distance. In this case, the force is QE, the field is uniform. So we can use this expression throughout the trajectory. And D is gonna be the distance between point A and point B. Again, we can put it in terms of uh, potential energy. Uh, the change in potential energy is going to be given by the change by the work done, but the change in potential energy is also the Q times the change in in, in electric potential. So we can get the electric potential from the definition. So it is dividing this by the charge. We end up with minus E D, which is what we have seen before in the case of parallel plates. So uh, what we need is uh, the strength of the field and the distance traveled to get the change in electric potential. So for instance, if the equipotential planes differ in potential by one volt, in other words, this is one, this from here to here is one volt, from here to here is another volt uh, decreasing. And the electric field is 25 volts per meter what is the distance between the plates? Well, we're asked uh, about the distance and we're giving the field and the change in electric potential. So let us take one length here. It's going to be from here to there is one volt and the electric field is 25 volts per meter. So the distance is going to be one volt divided by 25 volts per meter. and happens to be um, 0 0.04 meters, four centimeters. Sometimes uh, the equipotential lines are uh, not uh, uniformly distributed. They, they get separated. They get contracted here and separated here. And um, so if the field is slowly varying, we can um, estimate the, um, the magnitude of the field, if we know the equipotential surfaces, the value of the equi equipotential surfaces, we can do it through this uh, expression. What we have to uh, find is a delta V in a, in a distance D, and then obtain the field from there. So for instance, let us uh, first uh, find the direction. What is the direction of the electric field at points one, two, and three? I give you time, please pause, think, and answer. Remember that the field always goes to lower potentials, lower values of the potential. So 
So we know two things. It, it goes, the field always goes to lower values of the potential and it is perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So at this point, perpendicular means like this and it, it, it will go towards the zero because it, uh, it wants to reduce V. Here, this is perpendicular to this. At that location, it's gonna go like this and here, it's gonna go like that. Well, the second, the second part is um, what would be the magnitude of the electric field here, here, and there? Well, we go back to this, and we need to weigh an, a, of estimating a delta voltage, changing the voltage in a given distance. Well, I can tell you this much. Let us say that this is 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters, etc. So here it is changing uh, from 100 to 0 in 2 centimeters. So we can say the delta V is 100 and D equals 2 centimeters and the difference, the, the ratio is going to give you the field. So I'll let you work all three. So pause, work, and answer. So there we have it. <clears throat> Number one is uh, 100 volts, as I said. From here to there, we're taking 100 volts and in two, in two centimeters, which we have to put in meters, is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.02. So we get um, a huge number, 5,000 volts per meter. That would be the electric field there. And number two, uh, the situation is different because it, it takes, it goes, you know, from 100 to zero in four centimeters. So it's gonna be 100 divided by four. So it is, it is uh, number two is 100 divided by four, gives you 25,000 volts per meter. This one is a little bit more complicated because it is, it is at an angle. We know that in going from here all the way to there is 100 volts, but the question is how much is that distance? So we need to estimate the distance. And just by looking at the geometry, uh, you can estimate it to be uh, two and a half uh, centimeters. So when you take the ratio, you get 4,000 volts per meter. Uh, related type of problems is um, you're given a distribution of the electric field and you're asked to what equipotential surfaces that does it corresponds to. And for instance, let us take this case. In this case, um, we have zero volts on this surface, on this plane, and 50 on this one. So it is clear that this is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40. Actually, no. No, no, it doesn't go like that. It's a little bit less. It's like 9 or so. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, if we wanted to see the field, say, on this region here, we it, it's easy to see that it's going to be, you divide the uh, voltage, the difference in voltage by this length, which is say two units, whatever, and you can get um, a value. But if you do it here, you're going to get exactly the same value because it is the same change of voltage in the same distance and the same here. So this would give you an electric field pointing uh, th this way, pointing left. Here would you would get uh, an electric field pointing left of the same magnitude and the same here would be the same magnitude. So, so in, uh, in this case we would get an arrow, an arrow of the same length and an arrow of the same length. But, but so this does not correspond to this. We need, in this case, we need one in which the field, the equipotential lines change very rapidly change by a lot in small distance and they here on the other end they do not change as much in uh, some given distance so with this uh, information uh, i'll give you time to look at it and decide by yourself
Well, we have to see that um, here we have um, a big change in a, in a given distance. Here we have a small change in potential in a given distance. So we need to find one that has a big change and then a small change. And this one has a, a, a big change in a large distance. And this one has a, a big change is the same. This, this uh, three a jump from here to here is the same as the jump from here to here. So it's going to be the same as before, but in a smaller distance. So this would give you a strong field. This will give you a small field. This is not what we want. This would give you something uniform, but just like uniform like this, except that this one was pointing to the left and this one is pointing to the right because it goes from high to low. And this is the same as that, except that pointing in the opposite direction. And we come to this one here in the, here we have a lot of change in a small distance. Here we have the same change in a large distance. So this would give us a weak field, a small arrow. This one, this would give us a large field, a large arrow. So that's the, the um, answer. Another related question. Uh, a proton starts at point A and then accelerates in pa and passes by point B. What is the kinetic energy? Of the proton at point B. Well, it's precisely if if it began at rest, the kinetic energy is going to be exactly the amount of potential energy lost. So it went from 250 to 150. It lost 100 volts. So that energy was gain as kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy is gonna be 100 volts times the charge of an electron, 100 electron volts. Uh, this one, I already have the pause here, but um, let me explain. We have a, a point right there between these two charges, and which of the following statements is correct? Is the field there at the point zero and the voltage zero? And is the field zero and the voltage positive? And so on. So pause, think and answer. Well, we can see that um, the field is not zero in the um, at the point because it is at the center this one produces a field pointing to the right and this one produces a field also pointing to the right so they would add up would never give you zero so that kills these three possibilities and we end up with these two but now we know that the this one is both of, of these charges produce fields to the right so it has to be like this now what is the potential at the center the potential is going to be kq divided by r plus kq divided by r which is negative these two are exactly the same, but one is positive and one is negative, so it would, uh, they would cancel out. So V equals zero. We have another case. We have I here and F, their initial and final points. And I begins on a, an equipotential line that is at zero degree, uh, zero volts. And it ends up uh, at point F, which is on an equipotential surface that it that is at minus 50 volts. And the question is, as the particle follows this trajectory, if there will there's going to be a potential difference. Is this potential difference equals to 150, 0, 150, or 50? Well, it's already here. Pause. Think and answer. Well, it's going to be the, um, the change in potential is going to be the final potential minus the initial potential. The final is minus 50, minus 0. So you end up with um, minus 50. 
and this is independent of how it moves even it came down and went and then went up or if it goes straight into the other potential surface it would be the same so it's independent of the path same question as before for this case look at the arrows they are identical which means that the field is uniform everywhere so what distribution of uh, equipotential surfaces would give you this uh, distribution of fields? Well, obviously something that uh, is going to have the same delta V over D here, then here, then here. So it's going to be uh, delta V that is very uniform throughout. Another related problem. Uh, what are the magnitude and directions of the electric field at the dot? Magnitude and direction of the electric field. So you, uh, we already discussed this. So I'm gonna, just going to um, go straight into your pause thinking answer. Well, um, you can guess uh, that um, the field can, is going to be to the left because it's going to go from high voltage to low voltage. So it's going to be pointing to the left. And the magnitude is going to be 200 divided by 2 centimeters. So it's 200 divided by 2 centimeters equals 10,000 volts per meter. Continuing, we... We go back to something that we discussed before, but in this case, we're going to do it by looking at the change in electric potential. We saw before that um, if you charge a, a conductor, all the charge that you add is going to stay on the surface. It will be will get distributed. We also discussed that uh, the electric field inside is going to be zero, and that was because even though there are charges, they are not moving, which means that the field is zero. Then we also discussed that uh, the electric field right on the surface is going to be perpendicular to the surface, because otherwise it would induce surface currents that we know do not exist. And also we know that the field strength at sharp corners is going to be the largest. But then the question is, what is the, how does the potential change inside of the conductor? We had come to the conclusion before looking at a sphere that the potential inside was constant. It was going to be equal to the potential on the surface. Well, we can see that this is true now by looking at um, the change in electric potential. In this case, the field is uniform, so we are allowed to use the uniform field expression to calculate the potential. So it doesn't matter um, what distance you want to talk about. In this case, it would be the distance between point 0.2 and point 0.1. And this is going to be uh, equal to zero because the field is zero. And delta V is going to be the final voltage minus the initial voltage. So it's going to be V2 minus V1. That is going to be equal to zero, which means that V2 equals V1. All the points inside of a conductor are at the same voltage at the surface. We go back to what we said before, on corners there is the largest distribution of charges, consequently the field is going to be stronger stronger there in the fall, uh, on the corners. The electric field is going to be zero inside and any charge that is added to the object is going to reside on the surface. Here I have a conducting surface with a pointed end and a round end. I'll charge up the surface. Now, with this conducting surface, I have two electrodes. Uh, an electrode that will fit the rounded end and one that will fit the pointed end. And I will charge both of these up at the same time. Now, both of these have the same surface area. The question is, when I bring each of these to uh, the electroscope, 
which will charge more? Will it be the electroscope associated with the rounded end, the electroscope associated with the pointed end, or will they charge the same because the surface area of each electrode is the same? So as you can see, the electroscope associated with the pointed end charged up more than that associated with the rounded end. This is because the electric field at a point is greater than that at a rounded surface, and therefore the surface charge density is greater. Summarizing, we have, um, for a point charge, we knew that the field was pointing away, but now we know that the equipotential surfaces are circles around them, or spheres around them, around the, the, the point charge, and it is always perpendicular with, uh, to um, the direction of the electric field. If we have an uh, electric dipole, we, we drew the electric field lines before, they look like this, but now we are in, the, in a good position to find the equipotential surfaces. Well, at any point we go and draw a line at 90 degrees and we continue doing that and we can map these uh, equipotential surfaces. At some point they begin to circle around. Before that they just extend back. But we end up having a, a zero voltage right at the center because the, all these points are at the same distance from the positive than from the negative charge and the potential that they produce cancels and it gives you zero. We also did um, this one previously. This is uh, the case of parallel plates. The field goes from the positive to the negative and the group potential surfaces go uniformly uh, in between, growing linearly with X. All the homework for um, section 21.5 is uh, these conceptual questions and these multiple choice questions and two problems nothing new you can recognize the type of problems and that's it for section 21.5